Reno uh, Greyhound Station. Of course, today, it looks like... Reno today looks like there's a little bit of a, a service facility still on the premises. A little bit of activity because wherever there's gambling, everybody gets a piece of the pie. But that that's her today. Here's Redding, California in her heyday. Little old 743 sitting out front. From this original little storefront. So this didn't take that many years. This this terminal here was uh, finished in 1938. 1938 was a big year for Greyhound. Again, it was a big year for me. I got here. This old girl here was Pacific Greyhound Lines number 716. And she had air conditioned underneath her rear window. And her uh, original little ICC, Interstate Commerce Commission, license plate. Uh, I'm still trying to find some of these little buggers here. But I forgot to tell the Corgi people when they they spent about a year here researching 743s before they brought out their new Corgi die cast of this car, and I completely forgot that air condition was in the back of the Pacific. Well, wait a minute though. I don't think they're making a Pacific Greyhound version of it anyhow, so nothing to worry about. Another important Western one was the Yam Hill Stage Depot. See the little Greyhound logo up there is the original Pacific Greyhound emblem that we uh, issued a, a repro badge on once. Wish I had some right now to tell you the truth. I forgot to save myself one. This only goes to prove the fact that she was a busy little station. Now you have to remember back in those days cameras weren't all that fast. So this photographer had to get, he had to be pretty good in order to get a large plate of all of these people with all, all kinds of motion in the thing. A little lunch counter there. Lunches to put up. Didn't call it to go, I guess, in those days. Counter over to the other side of it over there. Sure was a lot of men in this picture. Take a look at that dapper Dan up there in the corner with his white spats. and He's all dressed out, decked out to kill. Probably hustling the bus station. Those guys have been around since day one, too. There's what I used to live for, boy. Right there. The timetable counter. Oh, boy, did I live for that thing. I'd go raid that thing big time. Then in November of 1938, along came the new Greyhound Terminal. And George Lewis still had his cafe there. That was George Lewis's cafe that you saw in the, in the old one in the 20s. Now I have been at this station. Although I don't believe she's any longer in existence now though. She's, she's history. Again another famous Pacific Greyhound pull through affair. Another of the more famous Greyhound post houses was the Gateway House at uh, Bedford, Pennsylvania, completed in 38 as well. It's hard to make out there, but that 743 and that yellow Z, they both have World's Fair uh, decals on them. What say we take a ride downtown on our brand new Pontiac? registered in the state of Virginia in 1942 and we take a look at Norfolk, Virginia 
which was indeed one of the most incredibly, as far as passenger boarding goes, uh, terminals, uh, Greyhound terminals that ever existed in the history of mankind in World War II. Norfolk back then had her streetcar still running, as you can see. The overhead catenary and the tracks in the street. Another really important and what you might call super boarding station was the one in Columbia, South Carolina. Even back in the old days, uh, she was she was pretty important because uh, military installations around Columbia. There's a little old timey bus sitting there waiting to take you away. Signed up for Asheville. It's an actual picture of that little curb siding, uh, curb loading station. A little placard down here telling you what's at the local uh, movie house in case you had enough time between buses to go over and watch a movie. She would emerge into this. She came online in 1939 and was the showplace of Columbia. Columbia is also the, the capital of South Carolina, in case you all don't know that one. Atlanta Greyhound owned her, and she came online in 1939, built at the staggering cost of $80,000. Believe it or not, it's still a bank today. I mean, uh, it's, it's perfectly intact. It looks like a bus station, but it's a bank. Now, an interesting thing at the ticket counter inside this terminal is this little bugger right here. That is a GM engineered Yellow Coach 719 model. And there's another little thing that I've never seen surface in 56 years of being on this planet. The checkout counter was awesome. It was loaded with toys. There, there's, a, there's a bus here. I have no idea what that is. Uh, I've never seen it. Opening door and everything. A beautiful old DeSoto taxi cab. There's a little old truck. Wyandotte, it looks like. A Wyandotte truck. But she was so representative of the Art Deco stations that came up in the late 30s. It was a whole form of architecture which unfortunately uh, should never have been demolished in many, many places. So, like I said, some of them are still standing. Columbus, Ohio, many years ago. Some interesting coaches hanging around the property there. I know bus fans who, uh, that have, have been there in, this, in its heyday and told me it was a great place to take bus pictures. The backyard always had a raft of them. It was a big junction point. As you can see, uh, behind the terminal was a full-blown garage, too. Another killer was the Detroit Great Lakes Greyhound Station. And I want to tell you, this, this station had some movements in it, I'm told. I never, I saw the station in latter years. It, it was there until recently. It may even still be there. But in these days, well, the old Blue Goose was still running. Coaches all came in over here. You can see some in the shadows. She was featured in a couple of uh, Greyhound movies. Travelogue movie. She was featured in quite a few uh, of the old Greyhound travel logs. A pretty little 4104 here. And watch how this thing is buffed out. You never see the 4104 shine like that in your life except for this movie, baby. <laughs> now she's going into Detroit. Yep. Silverside still running strong. Here's what she looked like inside during her heyday. I bet more than one IBC here this brings memories back to. 
The Upper Michigan Peninsula had some interesting post houses. In keeping with the frontier theme, uh, they're all log cabin affairs, very elegant. The motif was carried through to the inside. This is uh, the Greyhound Post House at Coldwater, Michigan. Still in the state of Michigan, we've got Kalamazoo. Now there's one of those beautiful big old stand-up 743 cutouts. I had one of those once upon a time. In those days, Kalamazoo Street loaded as well. Nearly everybody did until the, the modern Art Deco terminals came by. This would be Kalamazoo's Art Deco station. And who can forget lovely Minneapolis in days of old? Also coming up on street loading. And to say that they leased out the roof of that building for signs would be putting it mild for billboards. The Art Deco edifice came online in 1937, I'm sorry. And again, it was built by Thomas Lamb of New York City, who had so many uh, uh, of the Art Deco stations, but subcontracted to Lang and Roglin in Minneapolis. Some nice equipment sitting around out front. Nice new yellow coach, 743. And they would, uh, they would have a, a dog leg affair too, an L shape. Going in one way and coming out the other. Now who can forget Main Street, Modesto, California? Texaco, cabs and Pacific Greyhound. And this, the original Modesto uh, station was changed to look like this. Typical of uh, a lot of the Pacific Greyhound architecture, the Pacific people didn't run amuck with uh, making Art Deco stations up and down the system. They were plain and functional for the most part side-loading drive-through with a little 743 sitting in there. It's on the door. Pacific Greyhound uh, named all of their their equipment in the late 30s after the cities up and down the system and this is the city of Gold Hill. Pretty little girl when she were a new off to Amarillo, Texas. In her heyday, last uh, I went through, the, the terminal was still sitting there, but closed up tight as a drum. But in her heyday, she was quite a hub. Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma stages, uh, coaches, and uh, Southeastern Greyhound, Southwestern Greyhound, Southwestern Greyhound, not Southeastern Greyhound, came through. Today, again, the original Panhandle uh, Continental uh, Terminal is, is still in use in Amarillo. The Greyhound Terminal is gone. That's history. It's still sitting on site, all boarded up, but. Uh, Here's one of Panhandle's new C3s. This is the one that they opted to get stainless on the bottom though because of baggage bays. Now they load and, and, and depart on one side, but there's also the original tunnel uh, still in existence here. You pull in right, look over here on the left, see it? Uh, you pull in there. And they, at 2.30 in the morning, I understand this terminal is uh, loaded with uh, all kinds of connection cars. There's a restaurant on site happened to have been closed on Sunday. 
Uh, you'll see this at Bus Bash, if you're going to Amarillo's Bus Bash in 1994. I know that uh, lots of you are going to say, well, gee, you missed this, you missed that. No, I didn't miss it. First, there's only so much time on a videotape. Secondly, maybe the material didn't exist at all. This is old Elyria, uh, well, it's not old, it's Elyria, Ohio. <laughs> Nothing super old about uh, this terminal. Last I knew it was still in existence with today's cut back in service, tough to say. Now this is history. Uh, this is the old Asheville, North Carolina combination Greyhound and Trailway Station. In the South, Greyhound and Trailways uh, for many years same, shared the same facilities. That's when bus people operated Greyhound. They knew the value of each other. This is history now, too, as well. This is Portland, Maine, uh, back in the late 70s. Completely new terminal up there now, completely. Another piece of history, no longer in use, is Windsor, Ontario. Greyhound had some pretty neat stations up in, in Canada, too. Well, this one here is pretty cinder blockish, but uh, they had some neat ones up there as well. Now, as you all know, Southeastern Greyhound was a bit of a maverick when, uh, in their heyday, and they had a unique style of art deco that, they, that existed mainly only on their system. This is Jackson, Tennessee. Now, if you notice over there, there's a Gulf Motor Transport car sitting at the dock. They're both history now. The street side of the old Richmond, uh, Virginia Greyhound Terminal. Now, she didn't present much of a figure on the street side, but in the back, whoa, she opened up to a gazillion gates. It was, it was quite an interesting thing. Today, uh, she looks like this. Richmond today. Uh, only a couple of coaches go north of Richmond. This is one of their quote-unquote uh, hub terminals where you have to get off the bus change and whatnot. Oh boy, I'm telling you, these bankers really know how to move people around the earth. In any event, it looks like a bus station. Of course, Carolina Trailways is uh, uh, in revenue sh uh, sharing with uh, Greyhound, so you'll see Carolina Trailways here all the time. Anytime the new Trailways tries to do something, of course, Carolina Trailways is right there trying to upset it because they don't want to leave Greyhound. Now, this Greyhound here is, you know, he's on his way down to Charleston, South Carolina, where I come from. Well, yeah, where I live today. Obviously, you can tell by the accent in this tape that I am not a native Carolinian. Always was at heart, I guess, but anyhow. This old girl's on his way to Charleston. 1785. This guy, Charleston. Now here's Charleston uh, almost at ground zero. This little storefront still exists as a matter of fact. It's a newsstand. If you'll notice it says Union Bus Depot, the short line. Now remember William Vanderbilt's short line. There's the Atlantic Greyhound sign. Was very, very big at the time. Hey, look at this in the window, would you? Not only taunting us is still that die cut of the uh, the 843 streamliner, but look down there by the by the boy, past the fishing stuff here in in the south, fishing and hunting, big big stuff. But there, look at that Kingsbury Greyhound, brand spanking new, right there it was. Of course, with the demise of the short line, a great deal of it going into uh, the Greyhound system. Atlantic became the predominant carrier between Jacksonville and New York, or Washington, I should say. And this is what the people arrived at down on Society Street. Now they rebuilt this terminal right on site and changed it entirely around, though. 
it had a, a pretty good eating facility in it. And the cars north and southbound would uh, stop here and feed their people. And it was also a service area. They had fuel here. This is what she ended up looking like. Of course, Blue Ridge no longer serves Charleston either. Blue Ridge is, at the moment, not in the line business. They are not out of business, but they're not in the line business anymore, a victim of the, the policy of the Banker Greyhound folks out in Dallas. Today, you can't even get a bus to Charleston, South Carolina. You have to go to North Charleston. Nation. This is North Charleston uh, before the facelift. It's actually, all it is is an old gas station. This uh, Southeastern Stages comes in here. Southeastern Stages has changed their entire image, as you can see over here now. Now, this is the station a little more modernized. It's still up for sale. The guy that's owning it's trying to get rid of it. And here's an MC-12 coming in. Again, service out of Charleston has gone way, 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 way down. There's Southeastern's new look over there. They didn't want anything to do with that Greyhound image anymore. In the afternoon, uh, it's still boarding people, but out of, out of all of these people trying to get on this bus, seven had to be left behind. And if you wanted, the, they, one of them came over and said, are you with Greyhound? You see me making a video. I said, no, no, I'm not. Uh, he says, what are you doing? I says, I'm, I'm making a, a bus history video. He says, you want me to tell them on that video right now what I think of Greyhound? I said, no, that's, that's all right, partner. We'll, I, whatever you've got to say, I, uh, I agree with you probably 100% and then maybe 150% more. But there's Southeastern's new look. Man, that's a really pretty car. That is a really pretty car. Now, of course, Blue Ridge used to serve here, but uh, Blue Ridge was one of the casualties of the the new banking company Greyhound used to feed them coaches uh, used to feed them people to their coaches galore in Asheville Knoxville and uh, Columbia South Carolina and they kicked them out just because they got a few passengers too talk about cutting your nose to spite your face my word like I said, you can't get to Charleston no more. This is the closest you can get, North Charleston, nine miles away. However, even as this video is being made, plans are to resurrect trailways in this neck of the world again. And the people will go to it in a heartbeat. I can tell you, listen, you could put Mickey's bus service up here and people will go to it in a heartbeat. Well, I hope you like this old video from here, 50th Street, my favorite place in the world when I was a youngin. Here's a, a, a Champlain Coach yellow uh, 843 Streamliner coming out. Uh, again, we're doing this slow motion because it only lasts a brief second or two. But they were they were the, the big carriers between Boston and, uh, well, Boston and Montreal was Frontier, their division called Frontier. And from New York to Montreal was Champlain Coach, owned by Fifth Avenue Provincial Transport and Greyhound. But boy, I have some memories. Oh, do I have memories in that old station. And I'm sure no matter where we were in this video, from Minneapolis, all around the land, I'm sure somebody, some, some something in here probably gave you some kind of a memory. And uh, this is one of the most enjoyable videos and most moving videos I've made yet out of the 40 or odd bus titles that we have. And as long as the good Lord keeps letting me, we'll, we'll keep making some more for you. But, oh, the memories. A long time ago, in our nation's history, another era altogether. An era that's had values, people had values. But, no sense getting philosophical here. Again, this is, this is drug out a little bit just to be able to let you take a little look at it. 
because the actual scene just passes. I, I can remember waving out that greyhound.